Hey guys, welcome to the first video of the AWS playlist. In this video, we'll be talking about some of the important concepts such as cloud computing, different types of cloud such as public cloud, private cloud, hybrid cloud, and important AWS infrastructure components like regions and availability zones. It doesn't matter whether you are a fresher or a, like experienced person or someone who's willing to transition into DevOps or cloud engineering. I promise you that if you watch the entire playlist, then you will gain a lot of knowledge because we'll be covering each and every service from scratch. So this is Mohit and you're watching DevOps Studio. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to look at is cloud computing. Okay, so to understand this, uh, let's take an example. Let's say you are a startup, right? And you want infrastructure for your application deployments. Okay, so for that you have two options. First option is you can set up your own data center, right? And you can buy all the hardwares like the compute machines, the SSDs, the hard disk, the uh, storage devices, network devices, everything, and the staff who will manage that, right? So you must have seen in movies, right? These big data centers with a lot of machines and manpower, right? But the problem with that is it, it involves a very huge initial cost. Okay, so it's very expensive. But as a startup, you are aiming to save money, right? You, you don't want to spend that much initially. So this is where the option number two comes into picture, which is a cloud computing. Okay, so what happens is there are different cloud providers like Amazon Web Services, AWS, Microsoft Azure, right? So they already have these big data centers throughout the globe. Okay, and they let you use those resources for a small fees. Okay, so you're basically renting the resource rather than buying it on your own, right? And uh, you don't have to maintain, is, maintain it as well, right? Because the maintenance part, everything is done by the cloud provider itself. So let, to show you some of the benefits, uh, the first benefit that I already talked about is rent instead of buy. So the initial cost of ownership uh, is very, very low, okay? The next thing is you use what you need, right? So let's say uh, you need a machine and you want to run it for, let's say, only six hours every day, okay? So with cloud computing, you can basically turn it off. You can shut it down for the remaining 18 hours, okay? So basically you pay for only the resources that you're using, right? You're not paying for the entire infrastructure or for the entire 24 hours, right? So that is why it is more cost effective as well, right? It's more cost effective and it's also called as a pay as you go model, okay? Another thing that it's quick and accessible. So if you have a mobile device or a laptop, then it doesn't matter which part of the world you are in, you can easily access your resources on the cloud through the internet, right? And the last thing is, it's that it's very, very flexible, okay? So for example, initially you set up just one web server, okay? But after a few months, you realize that you're getting a lot of traffic. The, the influx of customers is there, right? So now you need five web servers, okay? So you can easily scale it up or down uh, by just clicking a few buttons, right? You don't have to buy the new hardware or new manpower to manage it, right? You can just scale it up through the cloud so just to give you another example let's say you want to have a windows 11 machine with 16 gigs of ram and 1 tb of ssd right so instead of buying that machine uh, from a mall or from a store you can just rent it on the cloud by sp paying a small fee and let's say if after three months you don't need that machine anymore then you can just turn it off right so it's very easy and very convenient but if you had bought the same machine from the mall or from a store then you after three months you are basically stuck with that machine right you paid a lot of money upfront right and now you are stuck with that machine so now you have to sell it or do something else with it right so that that is why cloud computing is uh, very trendy especially when it comes to startups right and it's a convenient way to you know deploy your applications so when you talk about cloud uh, there are few types of clouds that you need to know about for example public cloud private cloud and hybrid cloud now this is very very important you know why because 
This is a very common interview question, especially if you are a fresher or you have one to two years of experience. And in general, if you are a software engineer, then you should definitely know about these topics. Okay. So let's first uh, talk about uh, the public cloud. So whatever we just talked about, right? It, it's actually a public cloud, right? So it's accessible to many users. For example, I can also create account. You can also create account, right? And it's managed by a third party provider whether it's AWS or Azure or anyone else, right? So think of it as a big apartment building, right? So uh, let's say this apartment is the AWS infrastructure, right? And let's say company A comes, right? And ask AWS, hey, we want to deploy these many applications, so we need space. So what AWS does is, it let's say it uh, takes this first floor and it allocates it to the company A. Okay, and let's say uh, another company comes in, right? Company B. So again, it will take another flow and it will allocate that flow to company B, right? So as you can see, the underlying architecture, the data center, the machinery is still the same, right? But they are still isolated between different customers. Okay, now there's an issue with this, right? Uh, and that issue is security. Because let's say you are a healthcare company or you are a uh, banking organization right so obviously you will have a lot of sensitive customer information right and you just cannot trust a cloud provider with that information okay so this is where the private cloud comes into picture okay so it's dedicated for just one organization okay so the entire infrastructure is yours okay and that is why it's more secure okay and it gives you more control over the environment Okay, so there are two ways uh, you can set up a cl private cloud. Okay, so either you can uh, set up your own data centers as we just talked about, or you can also uh, opt for a private cloud provider. Okay, someone else who handles the infrastructure for you. Okay, so to explain it uh, in similar terms, uh, let's say you have, uh, let's go back to the same building. Okay, so in, now instead of uh, sharing this building with other companies, the whole building is yours okay so you get foolproof security and more control right you can do whatever you want with this building uh, you can store uh, any sort of data you want right so that is why uh, whenever someone asks you what is the difference between public and private cloud you can always say that private cloud is more secure than a public cloud and on the other hand when it comes to cost a public cloud is much cheaper and it's more convenient to use okay but these days what happens is very big organizations they like to you know use both of them okay so that is called a hybrid cloud okay it's a combination of public and private okay that is why it's called hybrid okay so what happens is uh, let's say you are a big organization right you have a lot of sensitive data so what you will do is you will put that sensitive data on the private cloud okay and you will put your public data or the data which is not that sensitive right you will put that on the public cloud okay so what happens is you are getting the best of both worlds right you get more flexibility and at the same time you save cost right because not everything is on the private cloud right uh, some things are on the public cloud so you are saving money but at the same time you are also getting more security for your production databases or your customer data, right? So these are the common uh, three types of cloud then that anybody will ask you, right? And again, this is a very common interview question. So if you wanna take notes, you can uh, pause the video and take notes because the next topic that we're going to talk about is very, very important. And that is the AWS global infrastructure, okay? So AWS global infrastructure basically uh, consists of uh, regions and availability zones. Okay, so let me explain you one by one what each of these are. Okay, so let's first talk about a region. Okay, so region is nothing but a geographical location. Okay, it can be anywhere in the world that contains a bunch of AZs, okay? AZ stands for availability zone, okay? So whenever someone says AZ, don't get confused. So as you can see in this image, this region has three AZs, 
AZA, AZB and AZC. Okay. And the way AWS denotes uh, these uh, regions is through city names. For example, uh, US East uh, is one region which is in the North Virginia and the code for that is US East 1. Similarly for US West Oregon, it's US West 2. Okay. Similarly, Europe Frankfurt, EU Central 1. Okay. And you don't have to uh, memorize all of them. Okay. Because as you start working on it, you will automatically know a few regions, a few commonly used regions, right? And as you can see that each region has a few availability zones. For example, US East 1 has these six availability zones. US East 1A, US East 1B, US East 1C and similarly D, E uh, and F. Okay. So now you might ask Mohit, uh, why do we have different AZs in a region, right? Why, why cannot we have just uh, a lot like a bunch of data centers in the same uh, region, right? Why not? So the reason for that is, let's say, let's take this uh, data center, right? Let's say something goes wrong with this. Let's say there is a fire, uh, power outage or something else that basically uh, shuts down this particular data center right so your data will be lost right or application will go down right so for, for important applications or production databases aws recommends that you at least use two az's okay so what happens is let's say this uh, data center goes down then your application will still be live from the other az okay so as you can tell uh, an az is nothing but a collection of data centers okay as you can see in az1 sorry aza we have a single data center in azb we have two in azc we have three right so to summarize all of this if someone asks you what is a region you can just say regions are geographical locations spread throughout the globe and each region contains one or more availability zones simple and if someone asks you what is an az then again, an AZ is just a collection of data centers, right? Very easy and straightforward. So uh, the next thing I want to show you is the global infrastructure. So if you take a look at this particular map, then uh, the blue dots you see are the existing regions, okay, throughout the globe. So as of today, there are a total of 34 regions. And the red dots are also regions, but they are coming soon. And one important tip here, right? Let's say you are in the US, okay? So you are right here, okay? And your customer base is here in India, right? So it's more logical to use the Indian regions while deploying your application on AWS. Why? Because it will improve the latency because your customer base is near that data center. Right. So always plan for this ahead. If you have multiple uh, customer bases, then you can have multiple regions as well, depending on the geography of the customers. But yeah, make sure you remember that you pick the closest uh, region to your customers. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and if you want to see more such videos in the future.